Hello and welcome to the Deep Lore Podcast. I'm Andrew and with me as always is my co-host uh, Alex. Hello. Um, so today I wanted to talk to Andrew about Centralia. And, Centralia? Uh, yep. Centralia. I don't know what that is. What is that? So you don't know anything about Centralia to I, begin with? Dude, okay. So on a scale from 1 to 10 of like me knowing stuff about Centralia, um, I don't even know how to spell Centralia, so I'm sure you could you could guess ten. Um, so, um, this is one of my I so a little backstory about me. I'm very interested in abandoned buildings and abandoned things that you know been left behind, like a mall that oh, fails. Oh, I agree, one hundred percent. Even just a generic abandoned building, and we'll probably get into this later in the podcast. But I used to explore abandoned buildings for for fun. It's one of oh, my, yeah, my, my hobbies. My, so. my brother, he uh, he's a photographer, and he um, takes pictures in abandoned buildings. So he right. has like all kinds of stuff. We can even link his IG if uh, people are interested. Oh, in yeah, that. yeah. I'm sure he would love the followers. If we talk about yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, on the topic of abandoned places, and this this is kind of a, a subgenre I'm gonna of I'm going to put the places. link right here. Can I say that? Yeah, and then just we'll, we'll I'm going to put the link. Up. Oh, wait. I'll... Yeah, right. Like point somewhere in here. here. We're both pointing, and we'll just have the link oh, everywhere. Wait, we'll point. just have it everywhere. We're gonna have ten links over the whole, the whole podcast. It's right um, here. Click my name. So, <laughs> uh, Centralia kind of. Fits oh wait, your there. mouse is on my face. Is it? Oh. <laughs> All right. So, um, <laughs> Centralia. Yes. So Centralia. Um, it's. So, let's just start from the beginning here. So. In 1980, Centralia had over a thousand people. So we're still talking a pretty small town, right? This is small town back in the day. Wait, um, how many? Three thousand, you said? One thousand. Over a thousand. One thousand. Over over a thousand over... is the straight estimate. So I'm gonna I'm gonna guess it's probably like a thousand ten ish. That's not a lot of people to have yeah, sex. Yeah, it's very with each small other. town. Very small town, but but still like a, a reasonable amount of people. You know, it's at least yeah. a town, right? Um, and they were down to ten people left in 2010. 10 people 10 people and then as of as of i think 2015 or 2016 Damn. one of the most recent like counts there's seven people left like you could count them on seven in, in two people hands. that's like the hills um, have eyes man right and and that's an interesting <laughs> um an interesting analogy you're bringing up there which we'll talk about later um Ooh. so basically what happened was in 1962 um this was a coal mining town this is a big coal mining town everybody's mining coal i mean that's probably what was going on all across america everybody needed and wanted coal it was a big thing getting Um, that black lung yep uh, (laughs) you get the black lung and so in 1962 something happened and this is contested people have disagreements on what is the real um the real cause here but there's a coal mine fire that started in 1962 and so some people are uh, people are arguing about it and uh, regardless of what people's um things are what what happened was um there was a fire so they had like a strip mine that they had used as a dump of some form by the sounds mm. of it i love the word dump <laughs> And they, uh, especially when it's used to talk about a place. Yeah. So, oh yeah, the town's a dump now, probably. The town's a dump. So, they started a they started a fire in um uh, in this strip mine that they were using as a dump to like burn the the garbage. I think like that's one. This is one of the theories. Um, and basically, the fire from the the incineration that they were doing stepped into the mine labyrinth, you know, throughout the the mines, and just lit the coal on fire, and so the whole place just kind of heated up, and it, the whole thing's just been on fire. And Ooh, nice. the other the other theory was that it's almost similar in theory is that they dropped a bunch of hot coal and ashes from the refining process into the strip mine, and it started on fire. But regardless, it sounds like they started the strip mine on fire, and it stepped into the into the, <laughs> the mines. And so at first you're like, okay, well, you know, you start the coal on fire, the coal burns up, you're done, right? But this place, this was 1962. I mean, how many years ago is that? That's like 40, 50 years ago. That's like 80 years ago. The coal in the mines is still (laughs) burning to this day. What? It's still burning to this day. Oh, shit. And so. That's like 100 years ago. And so what's awesome about this place, what's awesome about this place is like you can go there today 
and the, the there's there's coal burning beneath the town in the mines right so there's smoke and the smoke has to come out somewhere so you go through town and there's just these vents of just gas like smoke billowing out of just cracks in the ground and so on certain days if the wind's just right the whole town is just smoky and foggy and covered in just like this this mist right I wonder if you could make like smoked meats out of that. Like, if you just put it over one of like. <laughs> well, the, I'm actually the pretty sure that the fumes are are toxic, uh, because it's it's burning coal, right? So even better, hell so, yeah. So yeah, you could make some real nice meats out of that. I'm sure. Since <laughs> give them to your grandma, raw, who's costing you a lot of money in the nursing. Raw home. coal being burned. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> oh man, that sounds awesome. So when it first happened, there was apparently the town broke up into like a whole like eight different like groups of like who thought how severe it was like this is severe we need to leave to like ah don't worry about it we can stay here and like there was like eight like somewhere around eight varying groups of people like oh it's just a little bit dangerous to like it's kind of dangerous um and so people were all conflicted on what they were gonna do um and people were conflicted for a while and uh at some they point they took our coal yeah did they take your coal they yeah they took the well the fire took the coal so fuck um the um the mayor of the town at some point i'm thinking like i think it was like the 80s or the 90s maybe it was early 2000 was like they just condemned the whole place and they're like you guys gotta leave they uh they <laughs> they set the whole town to like eminent domain so like they owned the houses and they they spent a whole bunch of millions of dollars on relocating you have like people. 90 days to get out or whatever right right but then there was those like 10 people who were like no we're not leaving and so they finally settled and they said all right, you ten can stay here if you really want to until you die, and then we're taking your house and demolishing it. Um, and so, yeah, to this day, there's still at least seven people living there. And, like, they basically don't even want the town to exist. They removed the town's zip code. It's not even a valid zip code anymore. So, so why would you want to live there if you can't get Amazon Prime to your door? I don't know. What I'm guessing is it's just a bunch of old people, and they're like, I don't want to move. I'm staying here. This is where I grew up. And they just, probably don't have the internet. They don't want Amazon about Prime. It. They're just they're living life, inhaling these toxic fumes and, and loving it, you know? Just smoking cigarettes and toxic fumes from the earth. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so they, they were they were conflicted on power. They were conflicted on the how dangerous this was, but apparently uh at one point a sinkhole opened up as a 12 year old boy was walking and he fell in and i don't it doesn't seem like it was that deep but he couldn't get out and his brother actually saved his life and they found out that like there was really hard like really high levels of carbon monoxide fumes so if he would have stayed down there he would have died for sure so then Damn. people were like okay well this is pretty dangerous then <laughs> and that you know that gets people to uh you know that gets the, the fire burning for people right uh for sure. to get out of town and um like there's some there's some interesting things about this town like there's a few cemeteries in the town there's one cemetery in particular that is at the top of a hill and like all the time smoke is coming from the top of the hill so you're basically at this cemetery that's just covered in in smoke right great um and i'm gonna send you hey, a, can we smoke here i'm gonna send you a couple pictures <laughs> here now so here's um here's some of the smoke billowing up here uh, from some of the the cracks in the ground and oh dude that looks so safe yeah exactly and uh, wow yeah that's <laughs> did, did it crack the road yeah so like the heat's coming up and it just kind of cracks the road you know it uh and part of it is it's been abandoned no one's working on the roads anymore <laughs> so they let them decay so has the um, walking dead filmed here yet <laughs> no not well well maybe i don't know but doesn't it feel like that kind of thing like the, the roads wow. are clearly like abandoned you got the abandoned style roads there's kind of mist everywhere that's crazy um it just looks like somewhere and, and i've thought this ever since i first saw like heard about it and saw videos of it like i want to go there and take videos of it and just explore like it's just so fascinating and cool it's you, nutty. Know? you should definitely wear a mask <laughs> yeah a yeah thing. definitely um, I wonder where the people live. Yeah, I think so. From what I've seen, there's one of the pictures is kind of an aerial view a little bit. It looks like the people live in in cities, and like there's still a church there that that has church every Sunday. Are you serious? Uh, yeah. So for the seven people that live the, there, for the seven people, for the seven. Um. So it hey looks guys, like they live so a bit good to, than than where the caves. Good to see you back are. here. Um. 
but there's a Can there's you... a couple other other little things like there was a time capsule that was buried in 1966, so four years no. after the fire. Come on. Um, Wait, and... after the fire? Yeah, it must because the fire was in 1962, so it must have been before people left. And they um, got me fucked up. The time up. capsule's not that interesting on its own, and the contents aren't super interesting on its own, but. They it was supposed to be opened in twenty twenty sixteen. It was supposed to be dug back and checked out, but um, they had to dig it up early because apparently someone was digging there and trying to find it to steal the time capsule. <laughs> Which, like, why would you want to come there and steal the time capsule from Centralia? It probably just really had a understand. bunch of Bibles in it. So okay, so yeah, so it had um, of the the contents. They said there was a minor hat, a minor lamp, um, a Bible. And this is the weird one. I'm not sure why. Bible. And this one, uh, bloomers signed by the citizens of Centralia. So, hey guys, let's put <laughs> some underwear in there real quick. Yeah. Hey, just everybody, come sign it. <laughs> yeah, come just come sign, sign it. Just get the whole. Time. So, I, like, I was reading that and I thought, <laughs> okay, well, that's people. not that interesting. But then I was like, okay, someone tried to steal it and also signed bloomers. Like, this is some some weird things going on. Um. So that's the main, the main town. interesting things, but like I'm just fascinated by the aesthetic of the place, the the kind of foggy mist and the the well, seven people me, who won't leave. Um, yeah, to to me, it kind of looks like an old, like '70s town. You know, <laughs> it's got a church. It's probably got a VFW. It's probably got, you know, mm. some kind of small grocery store or whatever. Right. Well, uh, probably not really even not anymore. Much. I don't even think a grocery store could run in this t- sound of seven people. Yeah, there's like, well, I mean, like, there's one stretch of road. I'm sure, like, when it was booming. Oh, yeah, when it was booming, absolutely. There was probably one VFW, one, one grocery store. It just seemed like it was, like, obvious, like, obvious small town, you right. know? And one of the things that they said about the ages is, like, there's an 80 year old, like, two 70 year olds, like, Three of them are 60, 50 to 60. But then there was one who was like 25 to 28. Like those were the age ranges from like a census or something. And I'm they like, what is he doing for, for like work? He's living in like a small town in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. He's probably a Twitch streamer. That's how he's making his money. <laughs> Do they have internet out there? I don't know. It probably Maybe goes out like every drives... time the, the mine fire like burns the cables. I'm just here to look at the fire. I just... <laughs> I'll just look at the fire. He's they just, pay me five bucks the, a day to look the at the fire. He's the last coal miner there. He's working through the, the heated <laughs> mines. Um, so the last little tidbit of information that's interesting, and this is, this is why there's a, a fair amount of people that know about this place. Centralia was the inspiration for Silent Hill, the game, and the movies. Um, oh, because of the myth. Yeah, right. So this was the inspiration for that. And it's weird to think about something like that, like a video game and a movie and, and the series or whatever, based on like this mist and whatever. And then you find out that there's basically a real place that this is based on. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's not often. You know, it's not like you watch the movie It and they're like, oh, yeah, it was based off this clown that actually lived in the sewers and pulled kids in. You know, that would just be, you know, if you found that out, you'd be weirded out, right? Yeah, um, dude, you just made this town like two thousand times creepier. Right, right, and like, like now it just seems like we're just living here to get away f- with murder. Right, like there's this, just... and the, we just fall back into the fog of the carbon monoxide mist. Yeah, it's just it's got such an interesting like theme to it, you know, just with the and like and part of it is that it's been burning for like 50 years. It didn't just burn out in a day or a week or a yeah. month or a couple of years. Like it's still burning 50 years. And it's years burning later. underground. That's what's yeah, crazy. Yeah, underground and the mist is just flying up. It's, it seems like it's just a big earth oven. Like you mm-hmm. could just go like lay a burrito down like and you know pretty much I warm think there was a video up. I watched where they were like pouring water or something on the cement to see it like kind of evaporate like it is hot um and that's part of the reason why the roads are so cracked is because of the heat coming up um so that's centralia i've always found that fascinating and i've always wanted to yeah that's really cool Um, i've i've literally never heard of this place but now that i have i i would love to go there mm mm-hmm just as long as i have some kind of mask like gas mask i can wear right right and and that would be safe or even just a doctor's mask or something if we're there for like an hour or two we'll probably be fine but yeah. um well and other parts of the town i'm sure are not that bad i'm i think it's just that one spot isn't it right right it looks it's, like it from it the seems pictures. from what i can tell it seems like it's near that road and near the um the uh 
like out where the mines were, you know, you can kind of see the the area. Yeah, but, I'm sure it was just the only people that stayed were just old people and like probably like one, that one person's guy. like yeah, one person like to like stay with his grandparents or yeah, whatever. Yeah, he's probably just taking care of his grandparents. He probably just drives to a different town for work and every day. You can't day. you can't move in there now, so he must have been grandfathered in, you know what I mean? Like he was a kid. He's got to be someone's kid who was living there already probably. Do you think since they pretty much took all of the property as federal land or whatever mm -hmm. or state land, uh, they're waiting for the coal to like die out so that they can sell the property? Now that'd be interesting, but the thing is they've demolished most of the houses. Like they just got rid of it. So the town, oh, like okay. a lot of the houses are gone. Like if you see that picture from the aerial view, like there should have been like there's just one house on a block. Like clearly there was ha more houses there before, you know? Yeah, for um, sure. But yeah, they probably had to have leave the people who are living there houses. And I'm just gonna assume that they're gonna wait for them to die and then they're just gonna demolish houses and and then it never <laughs> happened. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's uh, just a bunch of weird roads here. It, no reason. No reason. No it's reason. There. It's a go, it's a go kart course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's um and even so even with abandoned like buildings for me, there's also like abandoned roads and near Centralia. It's not super close, but if we ever made the trip out to Centralia, uh, there's like an abandoned Pennsylvania Turnpike, probably a couple hours away, I would guess. Um that it's just an abandoned road but it looks like something out of a, a kind of like a horror movie or something i'm gonna find you a picture wait so where was centralia like what state pennsylvania pennsylvania um and it's on the east side of pennsylvania um that's interesting so i'm gonna throw a couple pictures here for you um Man, I, th I still think that's crazy that the roads were all cracked up like that. Yeah, yeah, it was always weird. So there's there's also, like, speaking oh, of the yeah, roads. Oh, yeah, that's creepy. This is the abandoned turnpike, uh, the Pennsylvania that's abandoned really turnpike. That's really creepy. And I've seen some videos on YouTube of people going here and exploring, um, like, the tunnels and whatnot. And it's always gave me, like, a, you know, it's that perfect feeling of, of just like it's abandoned, no one's here anymore, and like nature's taking. Like this looks like something that would be in The Walking Dead, right? Oh, absolutely. It's the same with those cracks in the in the road. Right, right. And and did you ever see the movie The Road? No. This like this reminds me so much of that movie. Um, wait, wh what? Who was in that? I don't know. It was so long. Like I never. So <laughs> I used to smoke a lot of weed back in the day. And, oh yeah. Uh, one night, I, uh, me and my friend, like, we had like f two other people over. Me and my friend were like, "Let's go smoke some weed." We only had a tiny bit, so we like snuck out to smoke it. And um, we got really hungry, so we're like, "Well, let's just go to like the gas station and get like some cheap stuff, like honey buns and like you know, little Debbie snacks." Oh um, God! <laughs> and then so we come <laughs> everything back. Everything that's we're, horrible for you. We're stoned. We have like honey buns and like just cheap like junk food. And we come back, and the other two people who we left at the house are watching the road. And we're just like, we just sit back and we're watching this road. And it's like this really creepy, weird vibe. And we're just like, like, where did you find this movie at my house? Like, where did this come from? And why are you watching this? Um, so I don't remember the movie too, too well. But it did have a creepy vibe like these, these two roads here. Um... But uh, I've always wanted to explore that. And then, uh, speaking of roads, like if we do a road trip, Andrew, which we should, um, yeah, for Route sure. Route sixty six, like that's not a big road anymore. Like it was undercut by the interstates. Yeah. Um, so now it's like really, really barren. And I would love to do a road trip taking that road because, like, the, a lot of the small towns that were thriving when that was the main road to get across the United States, they basically died out because everyone was taking the interstates. So you're kind of going through these these ghost ghost towns of sorts and like the road isn't used very much so like that gives that abandoned vibe as well except the roads are yeah. still at least a little bit kept up so you can drive them i'm sure there's a lot of places that have closed down right over the years that probably aren't necessarily that locked up there was right. a place by my apartment that was not particularly locked up mm -hmm. uh, for the longest time when I was in college, um, but we can t we can talk about that. Um, 
I don't know. Did you want to go ahead and start doing the, uh, or uh, did you have anything? I had one more. I had one more thing. Okay. Um, and then we can just talk about some abandoned places that we know. But this is this is drifting a little bit further from abandoned, but this is the abandoned that's like still active. Similar to like Route 66, where you feel that abandoned uh, theme in the background because it's no longer like a thing. But uh, the Cincinnati Mall, and like I think I just found videos of it on YouTube, and I just thought it was so bizarre. Where's but Cincinnati? <laughs> Cincinnati is in Ohio. Ohio, I think. Okay, Ohio. So basically, the mall opened. It looks like the mall opened as Forest Fair Mall in 1988, and um, the mall was thriving for a little bit, and then. Apparently, it started to falter after less than a year after it was opened. So they already were starting to have problems. And um, by after, by, before two years had been up with the mall, the owner of the mall, LJ Hooker, had already taken out bankruptcy protection. Wait. Wait. <laughs> yeah, Did you, you say LJ uh, Hooker? LJ Hooker, yeah. That's his name. But before two years were up on the mall, he had already taken out bankruptcy protection. So he had no faith that the mall was going to go anywhere. Of course. His name was L.J. Hooker. <laughs> he had to assume that it wasn't going to go anywhere. And so it was sold back and forth multiple times. It kept failing, and then like there was some up up class clothing stores in there, but then they failed because it was too up class. And then it started failing, and there was few stores, like less than fifty percent of the stores were filled. But then a Coles came, and then it had a small boom, Coles. and then Coles left, and like it's gone back and forth. So Tony Hawk for fat people clothes. Is that, yeah, exactly. That's, that's exactly. Close. So it was sold back and forth, and then it was reopened in 2004. And then in 2007, it declined again when it was discovered that the manager was paying employees and high school students to make sex videos. <laughs> so the word okay. got out. <laughs> the word got out wow. about that. Um, he sounds like a real neat guy. Yeah. And the word got out about that, and then they had some issues, and I'm I'm sure some lawsuits, and it, it started oh, to fail again. Just but probably just a couple. The interesting thing about this mall, and I'm gonna send you a few pictures, is that even to this day, I'm pretty sure to this day, These it's aren't still open. Are they? It's still open, but what? Like nobody's there. Like if you see this picture of this cafeteria, you're just looking at, and like you could tell it's kept up, right? But it's empty, so it's an, it's one of those weird vibes, you know? <clears throat> like you know what it looks like, kind of. What? The, just from these two pictures, it kind of looks like those uh, North Korean like hotels. Have you ever seen anything like like that? Oh, so North they... Korea. Yeah, they have like things that they built fake for like tourists to like show off and be like, oh yeah, look at our hotel, and then it's just empty. Yeah, because nobody ever went there. Did you see so the Vice it... documentary where they went to North Korea? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's and they had like the I'm fake grocery about. stores where they're like, oh, this is really cool, and he tries to buy like Doritos, and they're like, no, you're not allowed to buy that. Like it's all for show. Yeah. I'm sure the shelf life on all of it's yeah. garbage. It's probably but, expired. And... But they show these these pictures of these giant, um, you know, like these giant halls where, mm. you know, like big cafeterias for people to eat. And like they showed these massive expanses of stores and the stores are open and there's people in them, mm. or but not people buying stuff. It's just people like Walking that are around. just supposed to be there yeah. whenever tourists are going to be right, there. Right, right. So any shop that you go to is stocked 100% and has people working there, mm -hmm. working there. Yeah. It's probably just, you know, who, whoever looked the best, you know, they're right. the brand ambassadors, essentially. Right, right. But, yeah, that just kind of, that, that reminds me of well, that. Well, that's, in, that's in the, the feel way. that you would get here because, like, it's all abandoned storefronts except for a few things. Um, and uh, there's this post that uh, Trevor found for me. That cracked me up. This is the this is one of the um, signs outside the store. <laughs> and you know how malls have a sign that just has like it says we got this and this and this and this and then this side just says Outdoor World Co Coles and Babies R Us and every other slot is empty. <laughs> <laughs> Were those and places like, still open? I I believe so. Unless it closed in like the last year, I'm pretty sure it's still open. And it just has oh like, my god, it has like four stores, so there's no reason for anyone to be there. So you go there and there's like two people walking around. And what I've heard is that like the mall is so like barren that they don't even open on weekdays sometimes. Like sometimes they're just only open on the weekends. Really? Like there's no, it's not even a schedule because it's so barren. But for whatever reason, oh my God. they haven't closed down and given up. They're like, no, no, no. People, people are coming here for the three things this mall has to offer. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there's some videos on YouTube and, and maybe I'll find some and link them. But 
just videos of people walking through the mall and it's just you see this barren mall and you think okay well this is abandoned but at the same time it's like really clean and you're just like this is weird you know yeah dude honestly that that reminds me a lot of a mall we have here in austin or mm -hmm. that we had here in austin they mm -hmm. they renovated it a couple of years ago uh but we had this mall called north cross mall mm -hmm. and um it's actually where i learned how to hockey skate but that's a completely different story mm -hmm. um but it by the time that you know i was able to go to it um the only things that were left in it were um around halloween time they would open a haunted house and like this big portion of it because all the stores were closed mm -hmm. so they could just make the, all those stores into a haunted house mm -hmm. um so i mean that was one cool reason to go but yeah. uh they had like one one of those old school like japan korea style um like internet cafes oh yeah where yeah where you could go play like counter-strike on pc mm -hmm. like they, it was all pcs mm -hmm. there was no like consoles or anything right, right, right. Um, but you could go there and like the front part of it was like an anime slash comic book store mm -hmm. and then behind was the internet cafe where you could go in and, and play games and stuff mm -hmm. um and like that was like there was that and like i think one food place right. that you could eat at like this little like no you know no name coca-cola brand on the outside mm -hmm. um like food right things right, right. um and like those were the only things in there so like walking through there and seeing all of the storefronts closed yeah. and like there's no businesses it's mm -hmm. empty it's a kind of a weird feeling yeah so it's so you know empty. how it is like and and i had a similar experience but not quite as bad uh where i grew up in south dakota there was a mall that they had the discount theater in that mall so there was still a little bit of of action because it was like the cheap theater which is the only one in this town and right and, or, or city i don't even know if it counts as a city it's probably like if i had to guess it's between 100 and three three hundred thousand people so small um smallish smallish city uh, but that's well, like one of the biggest cities on the east side of south dakota so anyone who lives in any small town around there would go there that's the only discount theater right right so it get a little got a little action for the people who wanted to see something that was no longer playing at the main theaters <laughs> um but i remember walking through there and like you enter the entrance uh, by the by the theater right and like there's people by that entrance going to the the discount theater but then after that you walk down the hallway and there was like a hallmark or something and there's a couple stores but then otherwise i mean i remember there being some stores and i don't have a super vivid memory of this and there was also an arcade which was popular because it was across from the, the movie theater so kids would go there yeah um, but otherwise like i remember it just being empty like if you went past that wing like there was barely anyone any further than just that one wing of the mall and it was just yeah gave you that weird there's vibe. like a couple stores there mm -hmm. like uh so yeah, Jellers I've always loved something. that. I've always loved that <laughs> feeling of just like getting a weird vibe from something because you know it's forgotten <clears throat> and abandoned. It's it's odd because it almost seems kind of like uh, for some reason in my mind, I always equate it as being uh, similar to like um, like Russia. Oh yeah, like it if you think about it um a lot of uh, like take sochi for example they built a whole like olympic park in sochi oh yeah and then just deserted it it's right just, but i think mo a lot it's of not countries. being used <clears throat> it's yeah it's super bizarre it's definitely something i would love to to look more into and yeah, possibly we should do that, like, a, like olympic olympic locations post olympic yeah, do a whole episode on that. I think that'd be cool. But um, oh, I I did want to talk about one. I don't know if you're done. Are you done? Yeah, no. So those are the two things I wanted to bring up. So I'm cool. Like we can just talk about you know our experiences with abandoned buildings and things like so, that. So, um, I had one semi recently. Um, I hadn't really been. I mean, I've I've been uh like to theme parks after hours and i've been to um there's a theme park um near my old uh college that was uh abandoned like they're not not necessarily abandoned they just closed it down mm -hmm. and turned it into like a educational center for the, mm -hmm. the campus 
<clears throat> because the university bought the land mm. um or acquired it somehow i'm not sure but um so i had one recently i went with my brother um who is an avid um i i guess they call them urban explorers yeah yeah i think that's the, yeah, the that's right the term, term for it it's, it's, <clears throat> i want to be completely pc here <laughs> um so I went with him and his friend because they, they were going to take some pictures of my car because I, I just needed some pictures of it. Um, I'm very into my car. Yeah. Um, but so we went to this uh, abandoned... I don't even know what it was. It So the structure of this place uh, was this giant warehouse that had been built around a small house. Like it, or not it wasn't even really that small it was like a two-story yeah it's like a two-story house mm. um but the the warehouse had been torn down and the house was still standing but you could see where all the supports for the mm. warehouse had been and there was like the warehouse doors uh at one point were still up and there was still like some of the warehouse structure on on like the north side of it mm-hmm. um but so we went and we we were looking through this little house and um i guess one part of it was like a little shop it looked like they had turned a house into a business and then put built a warehouse at like over mm-hmm. it uh to keep it like inside as like the main office or something um right. but so this place was dilapidated it was there was graffiti everywhere i mean you could tell that like people had been there to tag it and stuff and there mm. was like i saw a bunch of um uh like roaches not like the bug but like the the drug um like a bunch of weed roaches laying around <laughs> um and so we like explored and like got onto like the big like, cat um machines you know like the big uh what do you call it caterpillar whatever the backhoe Mm -hmm. um and we started taking pictures of my car and these two guys like come out of like the this like thick brush near like the northern side of where this site is and uh, like my brother's taking pictures and this other dude's taking pictures and they're using like these lights to kind of like get like weirder pictures out Mm -hmm. of it and uh i see these dudes out of the corner of my eye and one of them is like wearing a wife beater shirt and like the other one's wearing like what looks kind of like a dirtyish shirt mm-hmm. and uh they both had like unkempt like long hair and like they they looked sketch to me like mm-hmm. I, the moment i saw them i was like sketch and they like started to walk towards us and then changed and like walked towards the house and like went into the house and then like i saw them like looking out the window at us and then they started to come out of the house and we were like okay we got to get out of here and you left like we didn't know what these dudes were gonna do they they looked like they were like kind of planning something i don't know like we had a ton of expensive camera equipment with us and a ex- nice expensive car mm. or not really that expensive it's just a, a decent car um so we got the hell out of there like we packed everything up and the dude started to walk out of the house like towards us Mm -hmm. um or like behind the house or something um but we just packed everything up and got out like as soon as possible like like, i I sped out of there i was like yeah i don't i don't know what these dudes want i don't want to know what they want the house was cool we got a lot of good pics and it was you know windows broken out and everything i feel you yeah we did a lot of exploring of abandoned houses i remember um this one night um and i have i have some better stories but i mean this one night i remember we'd already explored most of the big the big hitters of abandoned buildings i live in a very small town there's very few abandoned buildings um so we just kind of like went through the country and i don't know like some people were just like we were with like eight people like two carloads of people and People are like, oh yeah, I know. I'm pretty sure I know where this abandoned house is. And like, we go to this farm, this abandoned farm, and like, I'm walking by, and there's like this shelf like at uh, 
like head level like right here and as i'm walking by the snake like snaps at me and like flies <laughs> oh, right shit. in front of my face and like what? i'm super drunk and i'm just like i'm like what the fuck but then i realize like the next day i'm like damn i almost got bit in the face by a snake <laughs> Um, Holy shit. But, but we we kept driving around that night and like the two drivers were sober and then it was like eight of us or nine or ten of us in, in the two carloads that were all just smashed. Like we were so drunk and like someone's like, oh yeah, I know this abandoned like little schoolhouse. And so we get there and I'm like, well, it doesn't look super abandoned. Like it, it's kind of run down on the outside. The paint's chipping away, but it's it's not terrible looking. But there's a... a, a a chain link fence around the outside of the school but then the fence was like already pushed down and like it kind of looked dilapidated so i'm like so people have pushed over the fence and the fence isn't standing well and the 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 little school buildings the paint's chipping a little bit but otherwise it didn't seem like it was like structurally collapsing or anything and then one of our friends was like okay we're gonna go in and then they're like oh the door's closed today and then this other guy is just like all right i'll get through the door and he just like he just bumps it once and he goes flying through the door. <laughs> <laughs> and we get inside and it's a schoolhouse. And I'm just looking around and I'm looking at the desk and there's like apples sitting on the desk. And I'm like, this is definitely not abandoned. And like, Wait. <laughs> everyone's like, we need to get out of here now. <laughs> Wait, so it was like an actual school? <laughs> it was like in the middle of a country, like one of those country schoolhouses. But I didn't even think those were used Holy anymore shit. for one. And for two, like with the the fence coming down and the the paint chipping away, I was like, okay, it's pl it's plausible, right? And the other thing was, so it was very small. Like we're talking like like little house on the prairie style, like eight desk kind of like small, tiny little schoolhouse. Oh um, wow! And then there was like a basement that went down, and my friend went down into one of my friends went down into the basement, and the basement was like flooded with water. So like I don't no, know what was going on with this there. place. Um, like if it wasn't for the apples on the desk, I would be a hundred percent this place is abandoned. But then I'm like. There can't be apples somewhere if it's not abandoned, right? Are you um, sure they weren't rotted? If they were rotted, they would have been more obvious. But, like, I, I don't know. Like, But I was really drunk, so I don't know. But everyone's like, no, this can't be abandoned. So we <laughs> left. And I'm like, we just broke into, like, a country schoolhouse. I'm <laughs> like, I don't want to get blamed for like, this. Like, wolves had, like, come in and eaten the apples <laughs> and are, like, wa like, waiting in there for the kids. And, like, the... <laughs> oh, no, I can only imagine there's a story, like... It's wolves hiding in school eat children in country or something as a headline. It's, is it possible that it was like an old Sunday school or something that they had used? It could have been also like a Sunday school. It, it was it had to have been because I think there was pictures on the wall as well. So it was definitely in use. Uh, but like every other aesthetic of the place, because the desks were clean. They were well organized, you know. That's bizarre. But the, the basement was like flooded. The chain link fence was kind of like ramshackle and, and fallen. And then the paint was kind of chipping off, so it's not like they kept up. But then the inside was like, it looked fine. So yeah, I don't even know That's what was bizarre. going on. Yeah, so uh, that was weird. Um, and uh, there's a few other places. I remember there's one place, and I, I never got to go here, and I wish I did. But there were so many stories about it. This is where every, like, everyone in high school pretty much went to like this one abandoned amazing building or whatever. Um, and it was just like a farmhouse, like it's generic, but like of the few abandoned places, like this is a well-known one and everyone went there and they, sometimes they partied there. Sometimes there was like drinking and drugs and sometimes it was just going to explore. And this place burned down before I like got to the point in high school where I would go there. But there was someone from my grade and I think this was when we were in eighth grade. And then um, a few of the, the people who who were going knew these older kids like these sophomores in in high school so like two years older and they were planning to go there and they were drinking and partying that night or whatever and they were going to go there and um like two of the people knew that they were coming and the th other three of the people like that were in my grade or whatever didn't know that there's another group of people coming so they're going to like explore this abandoned farmhouse and um the other group was like let's scare the shit out of them and so like <laughs> They drive up and like just one guy gets out of the car and then like they're in the top of the farmhouse like looking out uh, of like a window and they're like who's pulling up who's pulling up and like two of them know what's going on so they're just pretending to be really scared. Yeah. <laughs> and like the guy like he gets out of the car they're like they're like oh no who could this be what's going on and then they like open the trunk and they pull out an axe and they oh, start shit. walking towards the farmhouse. <laughs>
<laughs> and like one of the kids um and i wasn't there i wish i was because I, I wish i could have heard it but like apparently he was like he was like freaking out he was like he was like like super like religious at least at that point and he was like down he's like hail like doing like hail marys and like please forgive me i'll i'll go to church every <laughs> sunday from now on just don't let me die and he was like, just like freaking out yeah um, and then just like a couple months later after that uh fiasco uh it burned down and i'm pretty sure it was like someone did it on purpose oh it but, burned down <laughs> yeah it burned down somehow. <laughs> mysterious very mysterious oh, um but that was the one place and then the, the one place that i went to multiple times which in my opinion is the coolest abandoned building that i went to um there was once our town was like three thousand people like this is a small small town um but back in the day we had a college in this town uh when the town was smaller and when the when the big city near us wasn't as big um you know it's like okay well here's one of the colleges that people go to and that was still small it was like i think it was a basement kind of um a basement level a first floor and a second floor so three stories and then it was like an l shape and then rooms like a college would be you know on each side of the on each side right, so there's probably right. like it wasn't massive either so i would say if you're walking there was probably like at most like eight rooms on each side this way and then when you turn the l there's probably like four or five rooms so we're talking you know 10 16 so like 26 times three so at most like 75 rooms in this college like it's not huge but it's still a decently right. sized and that i might be over exaggerating a little bit but um what's Wait, really so weird this was this was a that? community college i don't know like it was really old and it shut down early so it could have just been like just a normal college back in the day i don't know um oh, okay because they they moved somewhere else and they're not a com i don't think they count as a community college now so i don't think they were a community college then either um and it has a little bit of that old school's college aesthetic you know if you look at like frat movies how they have that little like that college kind of um that greek kind of you know what i yeah, mean like that a yeah. little bit of that aesthetic for the the college um and you could tell so it was kind of like a, a strange looking building and it had like like near the one the main entrance there was like a a roof that came out with like pillars on the side and it was like kind of like that white concrete like a, a roof there's before you get to the main door so you know it you know you could tell it was like a an interesting building but one of the things was all the windows were boarded up but they were boarded up from the outside um what? except for one window and this was bizarre because we didn't realize this at the time um uh so so what we did was we couldn't get in the main way so we unscrewed one of the boarded windows <laughs> and then we crawled through the window and got into the basement um but we were looking all around and like the place is pitch black because all the windows are boarded up except maybe the top floor was was not um and so every room is completely dark and then we turn this corner and then there's this one room that's that's bright from like moonlight right uh, because it's the only door it's only the only room with with uh with a window and we just we turn and we look in and it's just an empty room the moonlight shining in the window into the center of the room and in the middle is just a, like a dentist chair just this lone dentist chair in the middle of what in the middle of this room with light shining down and i had a Sounds picture like of this somewhere i don't know if i lost it but we were just like what the fuck dude like it's so bizarre um and like we knew people who'd gone there and then had gotten caught because they were using flashlights and people saw like light shining through and so like you know you have to be careful because there's a, an apartment right next door where people you know are active so they can easily see if someone's hanging out in there so probably some old people are like oh right and so and then so there was a there was the a cops. treatment center for um i don't know what it was but i think it was i think it was for people with um drug problems a treatment a drug treatment problem and it was a small facility and this is right nearby as well um and they at best they probably had like 20 rooms like this was a small treatment facility and the only people we would see there would be like native americans so i don't know for sure um the logistics of what was going on there i don't know i just know it was called you know a treatment center i don't want to give the full name away but um apparently supposedly they were using that college for um for storage so most of the rooms just had you know old filing cabinets and chairs and whatever that were dilapidated and broken down as we explored but then like on the top floor in the back room there's just like a box full of like flat screen monitors and like they were old school flat screen monitors and maybe they were broken 
Um, Because they were like, you know, the really thick ones. Like, it wasn't even worth taking. But someone's like, I could probably take these. Like a 13-inch monitor? (laughs) Yeah, probably that size, too. And it was the 4x3s, you know, back in the day. Yeah. Um, Oh, God. And, like, one of my friends was like, (laughs) dude, I'm coming back here to take those later. So, I don't know. Why? Um, And I was like, I don't want to be involved with stealing anything. But you do you. Um, We explored it, and there there was some obvious things that they had... um, like stored there but it was mostly worthless stuff probably because they knew people would break in and, and explore the place but there's one the one time i've ever like stolen something kind of uh, and i just i couldn't <laughs> resist dude i couldn't and you i don't bastard. like i don't feel like i i did anybody wrong and took something that was super valuable but there was a sign that had the name of the treatment center that was using it as like the storage facility and it was a massive sign i mean we're talking like i don't even know if i can <laughs> at least at least my arm's width span from wooden, so from your like, bed to your desk it was like this thick and it was probably like i don't even know at least this tall like it was this huge wood line um and Let's it just said, take a moment to appreciate how good your room looks <laughs> right right my room yeah, is quite yeah. beautiful you cleaned up for me i can tell but it said like whatever treatment center right and i i don't want to like give the name away or anything because i don't like you know give yeah too much no but you had you had but it. i had this sign and i was like i was like i'm putting this on my wall and so my room to get into my room you would come up these stairs you'd open a door and i basically own like the whole upstairs like it was a living room and then my room in a bathroom and like, i basically commandeered the whole you know that was my that was my space and like we'd always hang out in like the living room with like an xbox and like it was a great place to just hang out after school and party and whatever we did um, but to get up there is you open a door and then I had these stairs that go up and then they curve around and then it goes in. So it's like on the edge of the house, curve back. And oh, curves. okay. And so as right. you're going up before you take a curve, but when you get to that first wall, that's where the sign was. So as you're coming upstairs, I have this treatment center sign <laughs> and like, I thought it was awesome. But then, uh, this is the weird, the weirder thing. Um, a few weeks later or a few months later, it wasn't that much longer after I put the sign up. We had like, I had, like, there was this big party going on at my house, you know, we had like eight people hanging out inside. There was like six people out smoking cigarettes out in front of my house. And someone, and I lived delinquents. across the street. What's that? I said delinquents. Yeah. We, yeah. We were all a bit of, del- a bit of delinquents. Uh, but uh, so we were, we were hanging out, like they were hanging out smoking. I was probably out there smoking um, cigs and then. There's like there was a there was a park across the street from my house, like a, a children's park, and this is like this is probably like midnight, one a.m. at this point, because we're partying or whatever. And then we just see someone at the park just walking towards us, and we're just like, "What?" And then they keep getting closer, and then um, and then they're like, "What are you guys doing? Can I can I bomb a cig?" And we're just like, "What? Who are you?" And then all of a sudden, one of my friends is like, "Oh, I know you." I, s- I met you at the lake like three months ago up like 30 minutes away it's like Sioux Falls <laughs> and like I'm just like what these people know each other and they're like oh yeah I'm at, I'm at the treatment center um but I I kind of just snuck out and I was looking to find someone who could you know bum a cig or whatever like I don't know like what are the odds that they showed up and then so like they're like oh yeah come on in we know you you're cool we're, you're cool we're gonna let's hang out and um and we bring them upstairs, and like I have the treatment center sign as we're going in. And then people like give her, give her a, a beer or two, and like so she gets to, she leaves the treatment center, comes to my place. I have a treatment center sign, and then we they give her like cigs and beer and shit. And I'm just like, That's this hilarious. is so bizarre. Like I wouldn't have expected someone from there to actually be here. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then what's even weirder is like then like two weeks later or a month later, like I don't know if someone spread the word, another person leaves the treatment center. And he's like, yo, you guys got any drugs? And he's like, he just like, he keeps sneaking out every night for like a week or two. And like, he's like, dude, let me buy some Clonopin off you. And I'm like, no, dude, I need this show. I'm not selling it, especially to someone I don't know. Um, yeah. But he's like bothering me coming over every day for like a week. And I'm like, I'm like, we can't let any more of these people into my house because I don't know if he's going to come in here trying to steal my, my, <laughs> my drugs now. You know what I mean? Or kill you. Or kill me. Steal your drugs. Or kill me. Um, that happens, but it yeah, not. it was just so bizarre. And like, I just thought, like me putting up that sign, I was like, was this destined to happen? Because like, how many people have someone from a treatment center sneak out and show up at their specific house, and then they also have the sign? And then the first time someone knew who it was, like, it's just so bizarre to me. 
Maybe yeah. you just attract crazies. I attract crazies. We there's no denying that. Like we don't yeah. we don't have to. That's a that's a given. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, those are most of the abandoned places I've been to. I'm trying to think if if there's a lot I, more. I I had a really bizarre one, and it's it's weird because it's it's still really vivid in my memory, mm-hmm. but there's not much i can recall from it Mm -hmm. so we were this is when i was probably like i had to have been like 10 or 11 Mm -hmm. Uh, my grandparents bought some land um in georgetown which is way north of austin Mm -hmm. um it's essentially the hill country uh you're Basically, you know, it's all, it's all either people that have retired or uh, have money to live out there or have lived out there for a long time. Um, it's it's a lot of like ranch style land. Mm-hmm. Um, so they bought this huge like hundred acre uh, ranch, and um, we were dri- we were driving around, and it was like rainy as hell, and we were trying to find this place, and um, we. I think we got the wrong address or something uh, because we drove to this like weird farmhouse and like keep in mind this is like rainy as hell like nasty day like gray like not looking good it was pretty dark Um, there was mud everywhere at this place so um, we, we drive up and I remember getting out and like my grandpa like got out of the car and like everybody got out of the car and uh like there was this big sheet of metal that i guess uh had like blown off the roof like it was like a tin roof and it had blown off Uh, so they like picked it up and we're like looking at it and uh i guess we're like trying to move it off of the road so that they could get the car further up so that everybody could get out um and so my dad was like well let's go check out the house because they i guess they didn't know if there was a house on this land or not um or like I guess there was, but it was a different plot of land or something. So we go into this house. The door's unlocked. It's mm-hmm. just unlocked. Um, it, the house has power because we're like the the refrigerator. Um, like we opened the refrigerator and there was like jars of pickles. There wasn't much in the refrigerator. There was like a jar of peanut butter and like a jar of pickles, and like something covered in tin foil, and um. There was like nothing on the counters. Like there was like a, I think there was like bread, like a thing of like a loaf of bread that was obviously like really old. Um, like it looked like nobody had really been there in like a long time. And really, what it looked like was that everybody had just gotten up and left and like not taken anything with them. Because when we went and looked in the rooms, there was like a baby's room, and like the closet was still full of the baby's clothes. There was like a. a um what do you call it like a a, a bed mm-hmm. a like crib a cradle. there there was yeah. a crib um and there was like all of these like toys and stuff like uh it, it looked like they had just gotten up and left like right. there was stuff everywhere we went up into the attic and there was a bunch of stuff in the attic um like just looking through the rooms it was really odd because this house was dilapidated as hell but there was still it still looked like people had lived there while it was dilapidated um and then like just had gotten up and like walked out see that's um, one of those things where the more you think about it the weirder it is because like there's a family with a baby out they didn't even yeah. take the clothes like where's the family where's the baby did they just straight up get kidnapped did they just leave was it maybe was it like a maybe was there like a house of abuse and the mom just ran off with the baby and the dad like lived there for a little bit and then left? You know what I mean? Well, the other the other possibility that I thought about in that scenario was that they were they were still living there and they were just gone for the day. Like, but can you I mean, live there and it be like how can you only have a loaf of bread and a pickle and was, a peanut butter? You know, it was it was gross and well, I didn't see their pantry so i don't i can't i can't say for certain on that but like i mean it could just be something where they're like poor as hell and they couldn't afford any food and they had already eaten it because it wasn't like like in my memory it obviously it's probably a bit flawed but at the same time 
um, you know, it it to me it. You thought someone like, was still living there. It looked like it was possible that people were still living huh. there and that they were just gone, um, because it was just so dirty. I mean, like. It looked like a place that was just dirty enough to either be like hadn't been touched for a long time or people lived there and were just disgusting human beings. Huh. <laughs> like it was not clean at all. Um It's interesting. And it's not like the house was empty. There was still furniture in and it. The power was, still, was on. The power was still connected. I guess somehow. they could have been there. Can you imagine if I they came home while you're just walking through their house? Well, I think what happened is, like, my grandparents were like, yeah, this is not, like, I don't know if they looked it up on their GPS and figured it out, or if they were just like, yeah, this is not our place. Like, we got to get out of here. <laughs> so, like, we just left. Like, we didn't stick around. But it was, it's a really weird experience in my head when I think about it. It almost seems like a bad dream, like a nightmare. Mm-hmm. Just because, like, the place was so gloomy and disgusting. and Yeah, I, I know exactly like, what you mean when you say it's, like, a nightmare and, like, a bad dream where you just kind of have this memory that's just, like, it doesn't sit right with you. It felt that's... like a building in a Rob Zombie movie. Mm-hmm. That's, like, I guess the best way that right. I can explain it. Like, yeah. just gross and, like, sepia-toned or whatever. Or mm-hmm. not sepia-toned, but, like, that green and black tone mm-hmm. that they add to movies. It yeah. just wasn't a good experience. Right, right. Yeah, that's that's crazy, man. Like, I, that, but that's what I love about abandoned places, or even things that might not be abandoned. Like, you try to piece the story together yourself, you know. It and, it can, at least for me, it it can create like a sense of dread, but yeah, at the sure. same time, it can be kind of like a a cool, like sometimes it's kind of, it's cool to kind of feel like like weird or Weirded shitty out if that makes like, anything. Yeah. Yeah, you just. Like, I mean, I do it all the time when I look up, like, true crime stuff. Like, mm-hmm. anything... Like, I'm a, I'm a true crime nut. I love it. But, like, at the same time, it makes me feel like shit. Like, I get depressed a lot about it. Mm-hmm. But it's just so intriguing and interesting to well, kind of... I, I agree. And I'd together. say a lot of my tastes come down to that where, like... We, we spoke about this briefly in our failed podcast that may someday be seen. Um, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Maybe something. What failed podcast? Um, this is our first one. Are yeah, you, this are, is totally our first one. You're podcast. lying, right? Uh, but like, I'm very into the the uh, the theme that makes you feel uneasy, very uneasy. So when I go to an abandoned building, and and part of it is that suspension of disbelief. Like you try to just like let it be anything. Like who knows? Maybe it's haunted by demons or ghosts. You know, like I'm not particularly, um, you know, I don't particularly believe in demons and ghosts and all that, but. If Absolutely. I'm in an abandoned house, like I, I open myself up to the idea so that I can kind of put myself in a mindset where I'm easy, more easily scared because I enjoy. And it's the same for people watching scary movies, uh, but I, it, scary movies don't do it for me as well. So like, you know, yeah. if you go to an abandoned building, but then you also have the added tacked on thing. Like, what if the cops find me? Am I going to get caught for it's trespassing? The fear what if there's a homeless person? Well. Here? What if there's some meth dealers making meth in this abandoned building? Well, that's kind of me? part of that adrenaline thing, too. Yeah, it's like exactly. The The a lot of that like fear of getting caught or fear of the cops or fear of somebody being there. Mm-hmm. That's kind of that adrenaline rush right. of like, is somebody here? Mm-hmm. Oh, nobody's here. Okay. And then like, you kind of get that high of like, I'm the only one here. I'm alone. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't, I I really don't uh, explore places that often, but like when I do, or if I do, uh it's not gonna be at night That's oh yeah i feel you absolutely not happening. yeah because because we had and i've i've spoken to you about the to you about this andrew but there is a, a trail that has an abandoned building called it's called gitchy manito indian preserve or something like that or a nature preserve i can't remember gitchy gitchy manito yeah and um like back in like the 80s or something like that these people were out there smoking weed these kids like 14 15 16 17 18 something like it was like a it was like a gradient of all ages from 15 to 18 or something and they're out there smoking weed and then these two three farmer boys these three brothers that live nearby just come up and they they just walk up and they're like they're mentally deluded because they're pretending to be cops and then they also thought like they claim they thought that if you found someone doing drugs you're just allowed to kill them on sight or something so they just like blow two people away to straight up kill two people. What? And, um, and then the other three people who are there like take off running and then uh, they catch like one of the guys turns himself in and then they kill him. 
and then the other girl gets caught and then like the last girl who gets caught she's like 14 they take her away and then like i'm pretty sure they said like she said like they raped her and did all this stuff and then they said okay well you're too too young to get busted for drugs and they brought her home <laughs> and then, what and then so she tells the cops of course um and they're out driving around trying to find these guys um and as they're driving on to find the guys like the guys drive by in their car and she's like oh yeah that's the big boss's car and the cops what? pull him over and 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 get all the brothers and they're still in jail Holy to this day crap, but dude. what's funny is we go there right people are like oh you gotta check this place out it's awesome and it's just this trail it's the middle of the night it's kind of creepy because you can see like you know like a badger or some kind of small animals you can see their eyes glowing in the distance you know that's already creepy. oh i don't mess with that dude uh-huh. um but you just walk through uh-huh. this path through like a like and there's like fields on the side and and you can see that and then you just end up at like this old like native american ritual site kind of thing like there's a big bonfire pit in the middle with like what used to be a chimney and then the rest of the structure is kind of dilapidated and falling over and like they like people used to smoke weed there and then that happened Uh, but people were telling me about that and i was like wow that's a great story and i was like i always suspend my disbelief and i'm like wow really you know and then like then it's like the next day i'm talking about it and i was like man that was a really good story dude that's awesome and they're like no no it's real and then like i look it up and i'm like holy shit you know yeah and you get that Wait, extra so what, ha- air. what happened to the farmer dudes Did they uh, make- they, they're in jail they're still in jail to this day i, I have a oh, friend really? um who's like he's really weird and he just does like hilarious stuff like he's just weird in like a bizarre way so like the kind of things he does like he writes them every couple years <laughs> like just like to, i don't know what to talk about but like he just finds that stuff fascinating so he's like yeah i'm just gonna send him a hilarious letter or something like i don't know what he what? writes but that's like he, that's just him. He, like he's just like yeah i'll, I'll write they those probably guys just read it and throw it away <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> but I, I really like that kind of thing where it's like a true like that's like an urban legend right and then you're like oh yeah. it's true what yeah that's you know? crazy that's like i um that's like the whole uh, Austin yogurt shop murder thing, right? You told told me briefly about that, and you said the yeah, people never I, got caught. So yeah, uh, they never found out what happened. Or, I mean, they never they they two dudes turned themselves in, um, but then claimed that they it was because of like false confessions or whatever, uh-huh. and so they had to they had to let them go um, or exonerate them or whatever. Mm-hmm. So they never actually. Uh, my opinion is that those two dudes did probably it? did it. If they were, why? Why else would you confess? I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of variables there, but um, I remember hearing about it. Like, I think my mom told me about it because I asked her. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Mom, what's the yogurt shop murders?" Like, I heard about it from somebody at school or something. Right. And she she told me about it, and it's some messed up shit, man right like you said they were like and, captured there and they were raped yeah they, whatever, so they were then... captured and I th- I suspected of being raped mm-hmm. and then burned alive <laughs> like i have to laugh it's i don't so know ridiculous if, they had like sh- they had gunshots in their heads and I, I think what happened was they i don't think they were burned alive i think they were shot in the head and then burned and, like, to cover up evidence. yeah i think they like raped them individually and then shot them in the head at, like one after the other and then mm-hmm. burned the place down but like I worked kind of close to there and like hearing about it and like hear especially hearing about it from my mom who had like lived through that era, you know, mm-hmm. that was a year before I was born and she was living in Austin at the time mm-hmm. and she recalls reading articles about it and like following the story. Like I I can't remember if it was her or my dad that had told me about it, but um it was just really, really odd to have that happen in your town and mm-hmm. like somebody's not behind bars right that's crazy yeah it's it's bizarre and like there's a lot of unsolved mysteries which is also quite crazy and then there's ones that aren't as crazy like the what is it db cooper or whatever like ran away with the money yeah. no one knows if he's like alive or dead or what happened have, have you ever heard about the dilatov pass incident absolutely that we should save that for like just a we should podcast. do that That's a we great should do one. that one for sure we should do um, a, a special with that one that's so fascinating that to me. Yeah. It's so bizarre because like, they were found with like radiation and like really weird stuff, wasn't it? They were found like without their clothes on yeah. and some of them were like, I guess, cannibalized. Yeah, it or was suspe- so bizarre. Like, yeah, it was, it was weird. We could definitely do a whole episode mm, on that. We definitely could. That's a good one. I have like this fascination with um, like North Korea, like the uh, the hotels and, and tourists 
destination. Even just North Korea in general, like the whole thing. Um, like we could do a podcast just on North Korea. Like even just like Kim Jong Un. I I don't know if it was proven, but uh, there was like rumors. This one guy was like at the Malaysian airline airline uh, the Malaysia airport airport. Um, <clears throat> and like two girls ran up to him and like put like some kind of uh, nerve agent they had on their hands, like smeared it on his face and killed him. Um, like I think it was what? like Kim Jong Un's brother or uncle. Oh or something. yeah, yeah. And I've, they thought I've that seen, like Kim Jong Un ordered it, and people were just like, like if he's really sending hit people out at a like. At an airport, one, how did they get a nerve agent into an airport? I mean, yeah, that's, that's a topic on its own on its own thing. And then, I don't know, just the whole the whole thing, everything revolving around Kim Jong-un in North Korea is just bizarre to me. I just see the, the docu... I watch a lot of documentaries, and I see the documentaries of, um, like, you know, buildings and, and, like, apartment buildings that they've, you know, uh, built that are just completely empty. And, uh, like, seeing their city streets with, like, nobody on them, it's just, it's such a bizarre thing to, like, experience. And especially if you're there and, and you know, you're, you're going through all of that. Like, if you are there at that, you know, they're, um, they have that, like, outdoor area between the two, um, like, main, I guess, um, government buildings. You know, the ones that have, like, the flags on them, and they always, like, have the, like, parades and, like, uh, dancing and stuff in the center of. Right. And it's weird to see nobody walking through that. Like, it's right, just right. not something that you would walk through. Like, I, I, I'm assuming that you'd get in trouble for, like, obstructing the view of that or something. Yeah, I've always, like, thought about, you know, like, because you can go to North Korea, but I'm, like, it would be such a great story because it's just, like, so ridiculous. I'd love to see what it's like. But at the same time, I'm, like... You can, like, calculate your risk of, like, skydiving. It's, like, one in, who knows, a billion chance that your parachute actually fails and you die. But then it's, like, you go to, you go to North Korea, and it's, like, I don't even know what the odds are that you get captured. Cause some guy got captured for, like, yeah. leaving Bibles, which, granted, this was a stupid idea, but he's leaving Bibles in, like, the nightstands. <laughs> so, a- another dude got caught because he, um, like, took a North Korean, like, flag decoration, <laughs> like, from his hotel, I, I guess. so dumb. Like, he, he, like, put it in his bag or something, and I guess somebody told on him, or they were able to find out what it... I think they think the rooms are bugged, mm-hmm. but, um, yeah, so that guy, I think it's... He's still in North Korean um, labor camps. And he probably will be like, for a very long time. He probably will be. For, I think it was 15... He got 15 years, like, because he got sentenced in North Korea. Mm-hmm. So he got sentenced to like 15 years of hard labor for like stealing that like one little flag thing. And our president didn't do anything about it. He's just like, eh, whatever. Well, that's another one of the bizarre things about um, North Korea. It's like the fact that we're just letting it be there. Like it's just such a bizarre like state of like nobody's intervening. It's just like, yeah, you just you just coexist over there. Do your thing. There's yeah. so many bad things that can happen though if we try to intervene. That's oh like... no no no! I'm not I'm not I'm not um, I'm not advocating for like going in there and doing anything or assassinate because like if you assassinate him, someone else is just gonna take over. It's gonna be the same thing. Oh yeah. And absolutely. like trying to intervene with war that's putting South Korea at risk. But it's just so bizarre to me that it's just like, yeah, we'll just let him coexist. Like whatever. <laughs> it's like it's you don't know what to do. Weird play. It's such a weird thing to have. And it seems like it's only been, like, the last, like, 10 years that all of this is, like, going down. It's probably just that it's become more common knowledge. It doesn't doesn't feel to me like all of a sudden it's become like this. I think it's just now people are, like, aware of it, you know? Yeah. No, for sure. It... It's just such an odd thing to have even exist. But, I mean, it's cool to look at, like, the places that are abandoned that you know they they built like to to make it seem like like they mm-hmm. i think they built like a whole like city uh near the demilitarized zone to like show that they mm-hmm. you know had like to to try and entice people to come over to North Korea right right but it didn't work cuz nobody was there and nobody wanted to go to North Korea cuz it's like come on, it's North Korea but speaking of that like building these cities to entice people i, I was thinking about bringing this in another podcast but this is like the perfect time is um China's doing something very similar. I don't know if you've heard about this, and I'm I I haven't like backed it up with like I haven't looked at the sources, but I saw a documentary on it that could be very biased. But 
China has like so much money and whatever, and they wanted to invest in like bigger cities because you know their population is expanding and whatnot. And uh, they basically built because they wanted to keep people employed, like construction workers and stuff. I think that's what part of the reason. They built these massive cities, like these massive apartment complexes and these massive malls, like all this stuff in like areas where no one's living yet. So they basically just built a town and then they're like, okay, well, people will move in here eventually. But you basically have these abandoned brand new towns. (laughs) And so like I saw this documentary where they were like walking around one of the malls and like one of the guy moves there because he's like, okay, well, it's going to, you know, people are going to move here and this place is going to blow up. But people didn't move there that fast, and he's like trying to do like a toy store in the mall. But there's like there's like four stores in this massive like six story mall. Oh god! And like and like nobody's living in the town, so like he's trying to scrape by with what he's got. So um, if you build it, they will come. Doesn't work in that situation. Not in that, or or I mean, it may work. It may just take a lot more time than you think. Because <laughs> eventually they're gonna need it. But the thing is that I was curious about is. If it takes a long time, depending on how much time, like, are buildings still going to be up to code? Are they still going to be, like, are you keeping them up to date? Are they going to dilapidate? I mean, you know what I mean? Wait, so did they already build them all? I don't know if they built them all. This was just, like, one I read about that was built. I don't know if they're still building more or... I read that they're still building more. There's, like, a... And I don't know the name of this place. I wish I could tell you what it was. But there's this place in, um, oh God, what was it? Nigeria? Nigeria or maybe South Africa. I'm not entirely, no, it was definitely like, like the Congo or like Nigeria or something. And it was, I think it was a place that was close to the sea. So it had to be on like the Western coast of, um, uh, Africa. Right. But they had built this whole city, um, like a. It, it, they looked like a, a suburb, like a a Malibu suburb or something. Like they were really, really nice houses and like a, you know, nice uh, exteriors, nice interiors. Like I think they were fully furnished, but they built like this, uh, this huge uh, area of land with like all of these houses on it. And I think they had plans to build like 700 something houses because it was going to be this huge like colony. And I don't know if it like didn't go as planned or what, but like the f- the only part of it that got built was the first part. Mm-hmm. And I saw like an ad for it on Facebook and I looked it up and it was just like, um, you know, some some like well-dressed man like talking about like this place is a really nice place. You know, just talk like going over the talking points of it and everything. But I looked it up on on Google. Like they said, there's like, uh, there's gonna be like a thousand houses and all this stuff. And I looked it up on Google Maps. I didn't like. I just saw like the one plot of like maybe, maybe like thirty houses or mm. fifty houses, something somewhere in that range. Right. And I was like, did they not finish it, or did they like not get enough interest? Because mm-hmm. you know people in that area were poor or what but yeah. uh it's for i mean my assumption of it is that a lot of those places are probably empty right i mean if that if that didn't go as planned then you know maybe a couple people live there just a couple people they just take some, over the whole place yeah maybe some people like hop the fence and like go <laughs> smoke joints in there or something well you could probably like yeah jump in there and, and and live in one of the houses and no one would find you if most of them are empty you know yeah or pretend like you own it like you could just act like a neighbor they're not going to question whether or not you actually bought the house i think there's like <laughs> guards like armed guards oh. at the gates so i'm not sure if they're still employed or not but okay. if they are i wouldn't yeah, just wait for them that. to not be employed and then just go move in i don't think i'll ever go to africa just because politically don't think it's a a good place to be well i mean it depends where you go if you're gonna go to like middle africa or west africa where they're like mining diamonds and you got like war breaking out 24 7 like or uh, like failed states like, like Congo Somalia and all those or places Libya. that are towards the middle that have a lot of conflict 24 7 you know unless you're looking maybe, for coney um <laughs> i think maybe south africa would south be cool. africa south africa is like 
it's I think it's mostly white. Like that's a British. I think South a British Africa. British colony. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. I I just I'm not really well, the type of person to spend a bunch of money to go someplace, anyways. Right. But um, if and if I was gonna spend money to go someplace, I'd probably go to like an abandoned theme park or something. <laughs> Or an abandoned. I just I kind of want to experience a little town. bit of everything because I'd like to go out and see like the the deserts in Africa. Not like not like the places where there's a lot of warfare, but you know like people go on safaris and they get to see lions and stuff. Like there's got to be some kind of touristy places in some of the areas in Africa where that's acceptable. Yeah, for sure. My thought is that I haven't even really discovered much of America. Like. Oh, I absolutely. should probably discover my homeland before I go discovering other places. Yeah, and me and Trevor were talking about this. Um, like if we get if we can save up money like you me Trevor and some other people like if we save up money we should just do like a road trip around and like rent a an RV or like a camper or something and just drive like through every state and visit something in every state you know what i mean like just yeah, do like a crazy, massive man. road trip like vlog the whole thing you yeah know? like <laughs> that would be, be so awesome and like we nah. could and we could just impromptu stop at things on the side of the road like we're just like oh that that looks cool let's just go the in the world's and see what's largest going on. rubber ball or yeah something. something like that you know what I mean? like you just see <laughs> the world's really largest shoe stupid stuff on the side of the road we formed our town around the world's largest paperclip <laughs> we're the yeah, paperclip I, I just community think so fun and I've wanted to do that for so long I, I think we should all like make an effort to make that happen at some point because as you get yeah, older it's sure, less feasible dude. and. Just like do it for like a, a summer, a couple months. Do it or for something laughs. Like no, I it's feel all for that laughs. For sure, we could man. like party up and and you know what I mean. Party it up. Party it up in a camper. Woo! You know, we have one driver and everybody else is just drinking and having a good time. And so are you saying deep lore tour? The deep lore tour. Oh my god, what if we toured while we were on doing the first it? episode? We're talking about our yeah, tour. dude. Our, guys, <laughs> links in the description below. Tickets for our our American tour. <laughs> Starting it. <laughs> starting tomorrow starting tomorrow lined up uh all right so i'm gonna go ahead and say um uh michigan michigan would be nice is that where we're starting <laughs> starting michigan uh, no that would be cool man i think that would be awesome i'm i really want to like, pull something like that off it would just be so dope yeah you know? a, a big a big trip like that would be cool i i really do want to see more of america mm -hmm. Especially the then, the more odd parts of America, and then because like our vlogs murder are, houses, our vlogs are going to get millions of views, and we're going to have enough money that the next the next summer we'll do a whole road trip to Canada. We'll just do it for like every every country. Every Did you year. hear that, guys? Uh, Canadian road trip, <laughs> Canadian, uh, Canadian tour, tour twenty eighteen. Be ready, twenty eighteen. So, <laughs> no, I really us, I like really us do on wanna... iTunes and rate us on SoundCloud or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, wherever we're on, give us a like on YouTube. But like and subscribe. Smash that like button, S as they say. Smash that. Can we get over a hundred thousand likes on this? If we one? could get over ten million likes. That would be dope. Let's, if we could get over. Let's be 10 modest million. though. Let's let's go. Let's go for something that we could probably achieve. Like let's ten thousand likes. You know. Ten thousand. Something likes. achievable, right? Next yeah. video podcast two. We're gonna go for ten million. Ten million on the next one. You heard it here first folks uh, but yeah so you know if you guys enjoyed the podcast if you liked it then do leave a like and if you if like if we said anything incorrectly and towards the end we were kind of getting a little bit talking about stuff that we weren't like super uh, informed on. i've done no research on anything yeah I yeah so if we if we made mistakes let us know I, you know it's always nice to be told you're wrong so you can you know not make that mistake again so yeah, if we had any mistakes in any of our research or any of the things we talked about let us know and if you enjoyed this um you can leave a comment and let us know as well. And, uh, we're going to try to do this every this uh, podcast every Sunday. I don't know what our release schedule will be. Maybe we'll release it every Monday. Or maybe we'll we'll have a week buffer and we'll release it the next Sunday. But it should be yeah. a weekly thing. It should be a weekly thing. I don't know what our upload date is going to be. But yeah, you should expect more like this. Um, I yeah, enjoy I it. I love talking to Andrew. Um, especially about yeah. things like him teaching me things I don't know and me. Talking we always to him have about the craziest conversations. <laughs> yeah ex yeah I um so. i i also want to say that um if you have any cool ideas about something that you think would be neat to hear about in a podcast or that you want us to do some research on yeah yeah or if, if you guys... heard anything that we talked about that you want us to talk about more or unpack uh leave a comment yeah. and i mean we read them all 
yeah any any suggestions of, of anything that anybody finds interesting i mean let us know and we'll we'll try to do a little bit more research on that and, and find that yeah i'm happy with that so yeah you guys um i hope you enjoyed the video and uh or if you're yeah, listening on soundcloud by. i hope you enjoyed the podcast so yeah, uh, we'll see you guys next more. week hopefully peace out peace out